So that, my friends, is how you can take thousands of pounds from your limited company completely tax-free. Hi guys, Joshua Tharby here, back again with some fantastic tax saving tips. Today I'm talking to you about director's loan accounts, what they are, charging interest on them, what amount of interest you can charge, and some common pitfalls and mistakes to make sure you avoid to stay on the right side of HMRC. However, before we do that, please make sure that you are hitting the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, um, no matter what your jam is, put a comment on there, essentially just so that YouTube knows that this is some fantastic content and it pushes out there to help as many people save tax as possible. So before we get stuck in, do hit the like button, subscribe, all of that kind of stuff, put a comment on there, just to help YouTube push this video out there and save as many people tax as possible. So director's loan accounts, what are they? So your director's loan account is basically all of the money into the company, less the money out. So when you first set up your limited company, you're gonna put money in there as initial expenditure, so if you're purchasing a property, you put the money in for the mortgage deposits. And it doesn't just apply to money, it's also assets or expenses that you pay for personally on behalf of the company. So when you first set your company up, you're gonna put phones in there, laptops, you're gonna pay for expenses personally. All of this counts as money in, and it builds up your direct zone account balance, and it's less money out. So any money that you've taken back out as direct zone accounts repayments, that comes off of the balance there. So say for instance you put £100,000 in, this could be a mix of say £90,000 worth of mortgage deposits, cash that's actually gone in, you've sold your iPhone to the, com uh, to the company at £1,000, you've sold your MacBook to the company for £2,000, you pay for some expenses, you put £10,000 worth of business mileage through that you haven't actually got the money for from the company, that would be £4,500. You put all of this in, so you've now got your company essentially owing you £100,000. Throughout the year, you've needed some money to live off, you're not taking any salary or dividends, um, see my other videos for that, but you've taken 20,000 pounds out as a repayment of your director's loan account. So this means your company now owes you 80,000 pounds, you've got a director's loan account balance of 80,000 pounds. Now what a lot of people don't realize is where your limited company owes you money, as was the case here, you can charge a market rate of interest on this. So you're loaning your company money and as such, you can charge interest for the privilege. A lot of other accountants and commentators out there say it has to be HMRC's official rate of interest. They are wrong, completely full of rubbish. It's a market rate of interest you can charge here. If you listen to your accountant, you'll be paying more tax than you need to, unless of course you work with JSM partners. It's the market rate of interest, which means you can any rate you can justify. If you've been previously bankrupt, you've got CCJs, you've got no trading history, you're gonna find it next on impossible to actually get some kind of third party debt so your, your market rate of interest is gonna be a lot higher, 20, 30% even. For the vast majority of property investors, five to 15% is reasonable. But at the end of the day, if you were to offer an investor similar terms on Facebook or however you source your investors, what would they be charging you? That's what you can charge here as a market rate of interest. So charging your limited company interest, what exactly does that achieve? Why would you wanna do it? So the main reason here is that it's an expense in the company. So as a company, you're gonna be paying corporation tax at 19%, and the more expenses you have, the lower the profits in your limited company, which means the lower amount of corporation tax you're gonna be paying here. So if we can put through 10,000 pounds worth of interest, for example, this is saving you 1,900 pounds in corporation tax. 19% corporation tax rate is where that, where that comes from. So one thing to remember is that where you are charging interest, where a limited company is paying interest to an individual and that loan is expected to be for 365 days or more, you do need to do a CT61. This is a form which goes to HMRC every quarter where interest is paid and it basically tells HMRC the amount of interest has been paid and that you've deducted 20% of that and given it to HMRC for the, the recipient or you personally to reclaim that as part of your self-assessment tax return. So usually a lot of people say you have to do this quarterly, but when we do it, we calculate our interest on an annual basis, which means we make it available to the director once per year, which means we only do one of those per year. So the chances are, if your accountant is saying you need to do four a year, they're missing a trick. So it's all fine and dandy up until here. So we've saved 1,900 pounds in corporation tax, but you do need to remember that interest income is taxed on you personally. You only pay income tax on it, no national insurance but there are several bands available that can result in you paying zero income tax on it or a very low rate. So you've got your savings nil rate band, which is broadly where your first 5,000 pounds of taxable income is from savings. You pay 0% income tax there. 
Personal savings allowance is £1,000. If you're a basic rate taxpayer, you can always receive that completely tax free. If you're a higher rate, it's reduced to £500, but it's still completely tax free. And even if you're a basic rate taxpayer, you'll only be paying tax at 20% on that interest income. So overdrawn direct design account, what does that mean? If in that previous example where the, your company owed you £80,000, say for instance it was the other way around, so you're taking out more than you've put in, that means your direct design account is overdrawn, you are your limited company money. Broadly speaking, this is not a good position to be in because if it's not repaid, nine months and one day after the year end, HMRC are gonna charge something called section 455 or direct design account tax, which is 32.5%. So it's a very steep amount of tax. And broadly, this is charged and you won't get that back until that direct design account is repaid back to the company. So who should be charging interest on our direct design accounts? Essentially, where you're a basic rate taxpayer or less, you should be charging interest. So B R. Basic rate taxpayer, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, you really should be charging interest on your direct design account. If you don't have any other income, if you've not got any salary, you're not in a current any other job, you just fully, you've got 100,000 pounds, you've loaned that to your limited company, and this is it, this is your only income, you should definitely be charging interest to your limited company. Why is it still tax efficient for basic rate taxpayers to charge interest? Simply because you're gonna be paying 20% income tax, Sorry about the writing here, but you're saving 19% corporation tax, so 1% tax. If you've got a director's loan account big enough, it'll be less than 1% if you've got your savings nil rate bond available, your personal savings allowance, but for anybody who's used all of them up, you've got over employment income, if you can be charging interest on your director's loan account, you're paying 20% income tax, you're saving 19% corporation tax in that company, that's 1% tax. I don't know about you, but paying 1% tax is pretty fantastic. It's, you know, aside from paying no tax, 1% tax is the second best thing. So I'll definitely be looking to achieve that. So if you're a basic great taxpayer, you've got a director's loan account, make sure you are charging interest because it's gonna save you a lot of tax. So if you've enjoyed this video and you think this is gonna save you some tax, please do hit that thumbs up button so YouTube knows to push this to other people and help them save tax along the way. Otherwise, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as we post new tax saving content. Other than that guys, thanks for watching and have a great day.